Welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic which is GANs and deepfake. Some of the slides that we are going to cover are what are GANs and how do they work? What is a deepfake? How does deepfake work? Changes brought by deepfake and solutions to the problem. Okay. So before I start with today's session, I would just like to spend some time on what is neural network. Neural networks are nothing um, but a bunch of algorithms which are designed to mimic a human brain. And this is just an example to understand it in a very simple way. When you want the machine to recognize a certain pattern, you start by providing a data set that will train the machine to identify, say, a difference between a cat and a dog. The larger the data set, the better will be the accuracy. Facial recognition, for example, heavily relies on neural networks. Now that we have a basic understanding of neural networks, it is only fair for us to move our focus towards GAN. GANs are models that use an unsupervised learning approach. We start by feeding input that lacks the output. The generative model recognizes patterns from the input data and creates an output that is unknown and is based on the training set. When we lean towards predictive models to create output, it is also called discriminative model. So basically we are trying to pit two neural networks against each other. Generative adversarial networks have been a lot in charter since 2014 when Ian Goodfellow and co-authors published their articles. Now um, let us suppose you want to train a model that generates people's face. The generator will try to fake images, will try to create fake images, and the discriminator will try to identify if the data is real or fake. We can understand this concept in a way that generative model is like a thief who is trying to produce fake currency and use it without detection, while the discriminative model is like a cop who is trying to detect the counterfeit currency. Competition in this game drives both the teams to improve their methods until the counterfeits are indistinguishable from the genuine articles. Further, to understand the model, let's just assume that you only provide images of cat to the model. Now you give one image from the training set and one image of a dog. It should output zero if it gets fed a generated image and it should output one if it gets fed a real image. Moving on to our next slide, which is what is deep fake. According to Wikipedia, deep fakes are synthetic media in which a person in an existing image or video is replaced with someone else's likeness. So basically, these are just doctored images, videos, or audios using machine learning technique GAN. And it heavily relies on the neural network autoencoder. So as you see here in the slide, the original image is fed to your model. And over time, the discriminator keeps rejecting the fake image or some image which is not as close as the real one until it starts uh, accepting the image which is very close to the real image. So let's move on to the positive and negative aspects of this technology and provide many exciting advancements in our industry. Some of the pros as we see here are in the film industry videos or movies are often required to publish content in different languages but the mouth movement do not always sync perfectly with the help of deep fake no matter what language the actor seems to speak his or her lips will always perfectly sync with the words 
thereby creating the visual illusion that the actor is saying the words in different languages perfectly. Recently, China's state news agency launched an artificial intelligence news anchor who will report tirelessly all day, every day from anywhere in the country. We also have some very good educational applications of defect technology. For example, historical figures can be brought back to life and more interactive historical classes can be created for schools. But along with all the good things comes the negative aspects of this technology. In the recent events, the cyber security company Semantic said that the three companies have fallen for deep fake audio scams. In the scam, what happens is that the attacker pretends to be the CEO by using a deep fake audio and calls the senior financial officer for an urgent money transfer. And millions of dollars were gone just like that. Deep fake can be a problem, but where do we go from here? If an individual wants to avoid being a victim of deep fake video, here is what he or she can do. You can use a VPN when connecting to public area internet. You can safeguard your private images like avoiding uh, just don't post your personal images to public social media. Before reacting, just verify if the news is real or fake. As a society, we can develop new technology to detect fake videos. We can improve the internet moral guidance and we can reinforce new laws and policies. To sum it all, deep fake may raise issues about consent, fake news and political manipulation. The issues raised by deep fake are not new, but they are issues that cannot be solved alone at the tech level. One of the most apparent issues of deep fake technology is that the videos can be used for political manipulation. So the members of Congress introduced a bill in 2019 called Deep Fake Act of 2019. The bill's primary purpose is to combat the spread of disinformation through restrictions on deep fake video alteration technology. If the law is passed, it would require creators of false videos to label them as such or face up to five years in prison. So we have made our case clear here. Deep fake has problems, but there is one positive that has come from all of this. We can thank Deepfake for making us realize that we can't believe everything we see and hear and we cannot take it for granted either. In a political climate full of div division and unrest, Deepfake has allowed us to come together and solve this problem before it spirals out of control. Hopefully you enjoyed the slides and see you later. Thanks.